Now I invite sir to facilitate today's webinar on sales force and career opportunity. Very good morning to one and all gathered here through offline now I invite sir. and online also. It's my pleasure to see one of our industrious analysts, Mr. Yan Bhutte Shankar, was come over here to give a special talk about sales force and career opportunities. Wholeheartedly, we welcome you, Mr. Yan Bhutte Shankar, who studied here uh, way back uh, uh, 2009 to 2012, uh, BS Computer Science program. And immediately after that, he joined the MCA also. He successfully completed MCA. And now he is into uh, this uh, um, wonderful position as a UX and UI designer, SFDC and SF MC certified developer, MSP solution. As we were uh, planning towards the activities for our students who are studying presently in BSc Computer Science related to them, we are happy to have Mr. NVG Shankar who has come over here to give a talk on the special topic, which is a very emerging uh, topic, very useful to our students. I'm sure this particular webinar will be useful for the final year students because computer science program compared to other programs will not be like other courses because it involves a lot of technicalities, technological inputs we need. In addition to that, our students will be innovative and uh, creative. When the uh, Shankar was studying here, we had a privilege to have him as a student and uh, I noticed again. He was very silent, at the same time, an efficient student. Uh, whenever time happens, we used to lead the students. As a class rep, he was uh, doing a lot of activities. And also he involved in various association activities. And uh, he proved himself in those days when he studied as a student of uh, our department of computer science. I'm very happy that he is in a very good position. There are students who are going to attend uh, this webinar. Listen very carefully because this will be a challenging task for you to get a very good position in the near future. So computer science program will take you to the different disciplines and different uh, dimensions and different verticals also. Because corporate world is demanding candidates or students with a proper skill set, especially in the programming field, in the development side, and in the technological side, also people are expecting uh, students with uh, uh, greater uh, efficiency and uh, uh, effectiveness also. With this uh, few words, let me congratulate my own faculty members all uh, seated next to me. I uh, thank all the faculty members, Dr. Sophia Madam is uh, with us, uh, was given a welcome address, and uh, uh, Dr. Kirubai, along with uh, Dr. Bhuvaneshwari, has arranged this webinar with a lot of uh, you know, difficult situation. You know, we have uh, uh, today, we had the uh, early days for the first years, and uh, also I, uh, I gave a few tips for the first years also, because they're going to complete their program very soon uh, after three years. They're also joining different uh, uh, sectors. So they will also be joining now. I, I, I hope they will be attending now. So the primary students listen very carefully, take the inputs and take the uh, hints and uh, uh, apply it in your uh, attempts. Very soon we'll be expecting more campus interviews. Uh, that will also give you more directions uh, for your better future. With these few words, let me welcome once again uh, Mr. Yen Shankar and. Uh, all other faculty members who are with us. Thank you very much. Let us start this time in a very useful manner. God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. I am devoted and committed 
person with knowledge and skill to bring out good deeds. Now I invite with honor and joy Mr. Vijay Shankar from MST Solutions to take over the session. Over to you, Mr. Vijay Shankar. Yeah, thanks, ma'am. Thanks, sir. So it has been a pleasure to see you all again after long days. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for all those introduction as well. Let me share my screen. So a quick uh, uh, survey here. So before I go in, uh, into uh, the Salesforce, I just wanted to know how many of you have heard about Salesforce. You can use the reactions uh, option in Zoom. You can just mention like how many of you are here with uh, Salesforce knowledge. Have you heard about Salesforce earlier time or this is completely new? You can use the reaction like cross or yes. Maybe students can. Students, you can interact. Yeah, that's great. Here, like four people have responded. That's great. Students, you can put it in the chat box. Yeah, I think they, they are adding to reactions. I see around like seven people have responded. Just a, a pulse check, like how many of they are, are listening to this. Okay. Yeah, I think this is good. Uh, some have heard, some haven't heard. And I see like six people have heard so far. So today, uh, usually like uh, when I'm in, uh, in uh, maybe like in person, even so it'd be like more interactive, I'll try to be as interactive as possible in this. I need your cooperation as well so that we can interact much. So, so blazing your career with Salesforce. So today we'll uh, see what Salesforce actually is and then a short demo of how Salesforce works. And it's very brief thing. So it's a very big uh, thing, but I'll, make it very short so that you come to know a little bit of walkthrough of how things work with Salesforce. And then how do I learn Salesforce and what Salesforce has to offer for me? Okay. So myself, Vijay Shankar, so as we have already uh, uh, got, heard about the introduction, right? So I'm uh, working as a tech lead in MST Solutions. You can reach me through any of these platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or even the email. And I am working at MST Solutions. So MST Solutions is one of the gold partner headquartered in Arizona, US. And we have the development centers in uh, Trichy, uh, mainly the development center is Trichy, but now other we have in Chennai, <laughs> now is Tambaram as well. Uh, someone want to say something? Okay. Uh, so what our culture makes us uh, different is like uh, in what way like we are different from other companies. Right? So here we usually give importance to all three people like customers, community and colleagues. So whatever the importance that they give to the customer will be the same importance given to the community, maybe give, giving back to the community, maybe through this webinar, seminars or other actions that we are helping out through the community. You might have seen uh, in case like you are uh, uh, socially working with other people like uh, with the KMCs and other areas, like you might see this MST logo where they'll be helping out the community. And the same thing, like as a colleague, I, uh, I will say like, so the equal importance which the company gives to the customer gives the same importance to the colleague as well. And these are all some of the awards uh, that we have won. So one is on the great place to work in India, both in India as well as in the US, like we have this great place to work. And these are some of those awards. I'll just quickly go back to Okay. Okay. So, how many of you should have uh, ever expected like this everything? So, where we are digitally, right? So, connected digitally. And how many of you have expected like before this pandemic situation, like I'll be working from home or you will be working uh, learning from home? And even none of us uh, should have accepted as well. So, when we should have reached out to our principal to say that. Hey, I wanted to learn from uh, home and is, it, uh, is there any possibility? Would someone should have accepted this culture? 
I think certainly not, right? So you can use interaction or you can even unmute and speak. That should be very interactive. Otherwise, like I'll be like uh, monotonously, like I'll be speaking. Okay. So no one should have expected this uh, kind of culture, right? So everything got digitalized and we are connected digitally, though we are physically disconnected, but we are connected digitally. So that's how like everything is getting connected in this digital world where as a maybe like in case like if we say for a business to connect to customers, they need all the connections, right? So just say consider like our college has teachers and students unless otherwise they are connected together in this digital world, there is no meaning in the similar fashion. So business needs to be digitalized. The digitalized means that it needs to get connected with the customers as well. So before I go into Salesforce, I just wanted to help you understand like what actually it is and realities because like we should have been learning PHP, Java, all, all the programming languages, but Salesforce is kind of platform before I get inside that I'll just give a quick introduction about like where Salesforce is and how things get go into there. Okay. Consider like uh, we are having a car manufacturing company. Okay. So the manufacturing company will have the experts to build the car or make the all the uh, accessories and everything, right? So this is how they their concentration area would be like. If they are starting a car manufacturing company, again, if they wanted to be connected together with their customers or other areas, right? So they wanted an application. That's where we people come into picture. So you will be developing an application maybe in, uh, in next one, or year, one year or two years. Once after you graduate, I hear like you have some more freshers as well, like uh, junior, first year uh, students. So in three years, you will be actually connected to the companies where you'll be building some application for a company, right? So for a, coming back to the car manufacturing company, so car manufacturing company does not just manufacture a car, they will not be having all the accessories manufactured inside the car factory itself. They'll be connected with other sister companies or they'll be connected with other companies, co-companies to get the tires or the accessories, whatever it might be, right? So they need an application to track all those information, all those flows where uh, the parts are coming from, what kind of application they need to do, what kind of uh, workforce they have, and all those information they have, right? So these car manufacturing companies will be specialized in creating a car, but they will not be specialized in creating an application so that their business can run in a better way. So what this car manufacturing company with does, so they reach to the computer professionals, they provide their requirements, and that we create an application for them. This is how the uh, normal world works. But uh, consider, like, think like a car manufacturing company wanted a solution, but they do not know how to bring the solution, what kind of solution they need, and what they need, what they do. So the requirement is not proper. So we, as a computer science students or a developers, maybe in future, so we will not be able to deliver the right things for the car manufacturing company. Okay. So that car manufacturing company needs a solution that should be readily available. Maybe like in next one or two years, then uh, maybe like one or two months, they are going to build a factory. Maybe like uh, now we uh, heard about like OLA. Uh, so they are launching an electric vehicle, right? Something like that. When a car manufacturing company is coming into the world, they start manufacturing the cars, but their main importance is to give the manufacturing of the cars, not the building solution for the company to run actually the application. So. If they are, they'll be interested to see an application that is readily available in the market so that it will be easy for them to uh, keep their uh, business up and running. And again, that should be smart enough to be leverage their needs as well. Maybe like say, uh, if there are some applications, usually what we do, we finally students like uh, should have been creating projects. Whatever we do is like, so first we keep the, I'm not sure about like how, uh, how you are selecting the project, but usually people will do projects in PHP, Java, or whatever it might be. They'll be creating a web application. They'll be having an uh, security options and then underlying security and all those base platforms, right? So every project will be having a login screen. Every project will be having a uh, underlying architecture like security architecture and then database connectivity and all those information will be there. Now, why not like say if you are having like I see like 137 people we are here, maybe like staff, we are ignoring few people like we have almost like 100 people. So 100 people are creating a project like 100 people are creating a login screen again and again, having their own security, having their own uh, uh, underlying architecture to build a login screen and the security information, all those information, right? So. We'll be having like 100 different options for each. But the common theme is that to protect our uh, application, so we create a login screen. 
so why not think in a different way reuse those underlying architecture and give the importance to the part like where the application is important maybe like one will be creating an application for uh, uh, manufacturing industry one will be creating an application for a uh, uh, college or someone may be creating an application for a financing institution or a bank sector or something else but the common thing is like login or the uh, database connectivity all those information right so those things will be reusable so why not reuse uh, these things again the third point is like uh, say now the manufacturing company is up and running you have created an application for them maybe it took like uh, days and months to create an application for them and they are running now so they have been uh, maybe uh, creating cars developing cars using the petrol and the diesel segment now electric cars is coming into picture maybe like say uh, a car like uh, tesla is uh, you can understand like tesla created way back like they start to only with the electric uh, cars right so this when this kind of segment comes in so they need to change the things customize the application so that they fit the needs of electric cars not all the petrol and diesel cars will be having the same kind of architecture for as the electric cars electric cars has their own segment they have their own uh, flow they have their own kind of industries they have uh, maybe like they'll be dealing with all those batteries and the lithium ion batteries and every people related to those electric uh, items electric and electronic items but when we are when they were uh, interacting with their petrol and diesel cars right? so they'll be uh, integrating with different manufacturing sectors so when they are building an application so they need to customize that as well so this customization should not consume much of the time so any kind of people should be able to access them so uh, why i am taking the car manufacturing industry is like that will be easy to uh, help, helpful for you to understand like so those are all non technical people in the uh, industries they will not be able to be understand like maybe like sometimes when we work with some of the clients right so they we have to teach them that this is the start button this is the close button we have to click on this edge or chrome browser and this is how you interact with your application so we have to teach by step by step so these people are non technical they do not know how to interact with their com uh, computers so though we say like we are digitally connected though we say like computer is established all over the world even in the us i i uh, say to you right so they are not actually 100% technical there are many people who have in interacted with the application interacted with any of the uh, any of the softwares so car manufacturing industry will be having non technical people they need a extensive training for use uh, maybe helping them to use the application right so any kind of people should be able to be accessible and again like it should be anywhere anywhere in the world so when we say anywhere that's where the cloud come to, come into picture so can one of you tell i think like uh, we have like cloud computing as a, a part of the uh, project or maybe like part of your syllabus can one of you give a, a, a introduction about like what cloud computing is in your own understanding it does it need to be a definition in your own understanding like what cloud computing is and how does it helpful for uh, uh, help the industries or how do you see the cloud actually is can someone uh, tell about like what cloud actually is are you able to follow me yeah i see like david has raised his hand so are you able to unmute and uh, say what cloud actually is are you able to listen to me i think like it's a uh, kind of a mistake student third year second year you can unmute yourself and you can communicate this is the session for you you can interact so that the speaker can deliver you the things what you need of you can unmute yourself for speak to the chat Are you all connected, students? Okay. Ah, uh, fine. 
so cloud when we say like cloud computing and clouds this is my own definition do not uh, write this definition in your uh, uh, exam sheet and do not get it uh, code a negative marks okay so when we say cloud when we look at the uh, sky right so what it does so we see a cloud but that will be in an unstructured way and when we see it now the cloud will be in a different structure after a few minutes the cloud will be in different structure or sometimes afterwards you know, we will not be able to locate that cloud in the sky itself so this is how the cloud computing is like so we have a virtual server so virtual here means like we have a physical server but somewhere in the world we do not know where that server actually is so what we do we store your data in some of the uh, servers in somewhere in the world so maybe like the some maybe like i'm storing this uh, uh, presentation deck right so i'm storing somewhere in the cloud so now the data will be somewhere in india or after sometimes it will be in pakistan like afterwards it may be in australia or wherever it may be like part of your data will be replicated in multiple areas that's how the cloud computing actually works you cannot rely on a place like so hey my data resides in this indian server mumbai server alone it's not a case like cloud is somewhere like that's the reason like they made it as a cloud actually because like you do not understand like you cannot say this is how the cloud looks like this how the data looks like in the cloud this is how maybe like i'm having a 1 gb of data maybe like 1 gb of records like you have like millions of records maybe thousands of records will be in one server the other thousands will be in our other server so your data is distributed all over the world okay so the cloud will have the data anywhere so which can be accessible anywhere in the world maybe like an access here it should be readily available maybe i can access here i should be available when i go to us i'll be able to access that uh, cloud from us and how it might be right so this is how the cloud company works so now putting together everything right so we discussed on few ideas like first thing is whatever the application that i create it should be readily available which means that it should not take like months and years to create an application maybe it should talk uh, start maybe like i'm starting today at least like in few weeks i need some fruit for the customers to see hey this is the application that you wanted and this is the application that i have created and here you can start uh, working on that so that is how the customers will uh, expect like when they give the solution like when we are create taking years of uh, months to create an application so it's actually affecting their business as well so solution needs to be readily available and it should be smart enough we have to reuse the underlying architecture like security connectivity and all this information should be reusable and then the solution should be customizable and should be available anywhere okay these are the items that comes into uh, comes into the picture and this is how we create we say like salesforce i am not here coming here to brand you about salesforce but i am coming here to give an awareness like hey this is salesforce and this is how things work in salesforce and this is the opportunities that you have with the salesforce so we call like salesforce is a number one crm in the world crm in the sense like customer relationship management as if you have uh, uh, heard in the first slide right so what i mentioned like so business needs to be connected with the customers so customer and business is the close relationship so salesforce is the platform where business and customers are connected together so we call it as number one crm because there are other crm as well like if you should have heard about zoho crm is available dynamic crm in microsoft is available sugar crm is available there are, there are multitudes of crms available but what makes it different for the salesforce to come into this picture like why we call it as number one is because of the revenue the application the solution that is available maybe in the upcoming uh, slide i'll share like what are the solution that is available in salesforce and how far it is like competitive to other competitors again like customer relationship management it helps the companies to run their business even in the mobile phone say uh, maybe like most of the projects which we deliver right so it will be like very short term projects like we will be delivering a project like when we need an application for a company maybe like if we say the same uh, uh, car manufacturing company it wouldn't take months to deliver but just a week maybe like a uh, 3 weeks or 4 weeks to deliver a application for the car manufacturing company to start using that application okay this how like they'll be running the application not just they should not sit under the laptop or they should not completely working with the desktop or they need to be always present in the car manufacturing company maybe like the c level executives like ceos directors they will be traveling all around the world they'll be in continuous meetings still they need an option to connect with their uh, their company how the uh, process is actually uh, moving forward and they need the complete connectivity that's how the salesforce will be helpful so all the application which you are able to do with the laptop or desktop can be done just with your mobile phone as well 
in fact like multiple business are running just be using the mobile phones so that that's how the sales force is working and then sales force is again a cloud based where all your information is up to date like it doesn't mean that uh, you have to enter your data in uh, uh, maybe like uh, in a mobile phone and you have to wait for hours to get it updated in desktop or something like that i think like these terms you should have been already aware of that that's the reason that i'm just uh, uh, going in a, a faster way right so because i have to give importance like what salesforce actually is so salesforce is the leading cloud ecosystem and you might wonder like how that is possible for a business to run in a, just a mobile phone so solution to run the entire business anywhere in the world and these are all the options that is available so they call it as customer 360 program because for a business to run they need everything they need maybe like they need the customers they need to work with their uh, maybe like accessory companies and other companies spare parts and other all those assembly units they need different facilities not the uh, single facility will be in single place they will be having multiple facilities also if you see if they are manufacturing a car they need to forecast they need to analyze how which age group is actually purchasing this car or how many uh, months does it take to reach the car, uh, on road and how which days or which months this car will be actually utilized by the uh, uh, customers and all those areas right so they need to analyze they need to find the better way so that they are manufacturing the cars in the right days maybe not all cars will be selling all through the years so maybe like some cars will be selling only on march to april or june so some cars will not be selling in those areas because like that is how the financial year is starting and they'll be having people will be having more money in their hand and they'll be investing more in the uh, industry they'll be changing their cars or something like that so these kind of analytics are there also when there is a, say uh, to give you a simple example right so some uh, maybe like i need someone to interact with you then uh, only then i'll be able to help you out to understand sales of more better better way say if you are calling your war phone customer care or atel customer care so can someone give me a uh, way like how things work so once you are maybe like you are recharging your number but this is not actually a successful attempt so you have recharged for an yearly plan like we have like 2 uh, 2.5k uh, plan so you have recharged with 2.5k your amount amount got deducted but your uh, vodafone carrier or the atel carrier doesn't reflect back so what will be your next step okay so usually what we do right so we'll be calling the customer care we will not provide all the details so our information will be up to date whenever we call our number will be available to them and they'll be taking that and they'll be seeing all the factors like so what happened in the past and they'll not be asking us just the problem will be they'll be asking us but everything will be tracked under like when we reached our we recharged our amount so what happens and what where the amount got stuck and why did not it got reflected and what resolution that they can give so this is a small flow that i am helping you to understand so this is a small flow for a customer care okay so this flow might take uh, maybe like it might need to talk with the banking sector it might be a problem with some uh, some maybe like your carrier or due to some network issues whatever it may be but they have to understand this architecture right so this is how the tracking will be happening so whenever we have in salesforce maybe like in the next uh, window i'll show you how the salesforce uh, window is so they will be having all those information about the customers when we joined what a phone what kind of information they'll be tracking about us what are the uh, calls that we did how we recharged and what kind of platform that we recharged and what is the issue that we have and this information right this will take just a minute for them to start uh, the application and track all this information that's how the things work believe it or not so vodafone atel and all those all those platforms are using salesforce as their uh, back end so we do not know but this is how salesforce is working like without knowing that we are using salesforce day by day so whenever we are recharging actually everything goes to salesforce and all those processes actually automatically happen so salesforce does not stop with this so even you have opportunity with blockchain if you have heard about bitcoin cryptocurrency all those information so salesforce has the technology for blockchain and then analytics what we say is like lightning analytics so to forecast within a minute so you can forecast like 
you should have heard about tableau crm i'm not sure like how uh, i heard about any of the analytic platforms so only then uh, you have like tableau and all those data and other analytics platform where you will be able to analyze the data like millions of data like if you have should have heard about like big data you have millions of records you cannot just load it into a java platform or a php platform or a python platform to analyze that you cannot visualize them so you need some particular platform like early days we had in python like tensorflow and all those information but salesforce has incorporated everything you can load millions of record and within a second so you get all the information about what things are and how things are working and how things are moving forward with the salesforce and what is the forecast how my sales would be in next quarter or maybe in next 3 months how the sales uh, would be and all kind of force uh, forecasting can be done with this and then marketing campaigning whatever things like say if you are purchasing a waterfront uh, sim card so there will be campaigning outside of our college right so maybe like you should have seen back some days back so you'll be having a, a small campaigning they get to uh, note your names they get all your uh, information and they just call back and say like you have came to our uh, campaigning and uh, do you want to purchase the sim card and all those information those will be tracked under this platform everything will be trackable nothing is like uh, untrackable with salesforce and then you can integrate multiple system you can integrate with the weather system you can integrate with the uh, uh, financial banking sectors and all those information can be integrated together with this salesforce okay so far no like you should have been uh, wondering like so i have been talking everything about salesforce but what actually as a software developer or a computer science student what am i going to salesforce say you are saying like all the salesforce has the everything ready for them and what is this for them for uh, me as a developer or for me as a computer science student going to do with the uh, salesforce at least now i have a simple question for you i need one of you to answer like when i say database what are the terminologies that you uh, you remind you, uh, you uh, get to in to your mind Um, this is it be uh, is it like uh, usual that uh, people do not uh, uh, open their speaker out i see like very less interaction here okay i see like a uh, collection of data yeah that's good uh, sivaram so any others uh, terminologies like what database consist of that's great i see like people are just telling table fields records it's great ritesh ji to so, interact with yeah so database when we say right so you say tables columns rows and all those information yeah sorry someone wanted to say something okay so we usually have as a for a, a, a database right? so we'll be having tables mm-hmm. columns and rows and that is the same terminology that we call in salesforce with a different name so for for salesforce right so we usually have app object maybe like consider like database is an app here Okay. I think I got unmuted. Okay. So when we say database, in Salesforce we call it as app. When we call in the database like uh, tables, we call objects here, and then columns is called as fields and rows as records. For you to help you to understand, right? So in our college, so we have multiple activities going on. So we can consider like. say there are some educational activities going on and then extension activities going and then foreign relationship where we interact with other uh, external uh, com- uh, universities or colleges to, for collaborating with them and you just interact with other uh, companies maybe like it sector like maybe different pay, big companies big corporates like infosys tcs you rela- create a relationship like college create a relationship so that uh, students get a, a maybe like for take placement here right so all those foreign relationship and then internal we have internally we have a staff management and then important thing the finance like where we manage all those fees and the salaries for uh, 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 all the workers at the college right 
so segregating these into database so in education for an educational activity what we have like consider like uh, database name is education activities so what we call in salesforce is an app education activities an app inside that what we call the, the tables so we have students staff courses departments okay these are all the objects we have in salesforce which is like a, for an education to happen we need students we need staff we need course we have courses uh, which course which maybe like course can be day shift or evening shift financial uh, uh, self financing or aided or whatever maybe and we have the departments all those education related information and then when we say like extension activities again we'll be having students and then we have the staff and then we have the rotary club or youth club and all those clubs we have right so the red cross and all those in, uh, club related information and other other co curricular activities we will be having all those information like where they rallied where they uh, what kind of activities they did and all those information needs to be tracked under the education activities when we say like a foreign relationship so what kind of travels that uh, which staff went to which uh, country or what kind of institution collaborated with uh, maybe signed an mou with our uh, college and all those information when we say like internal staff management right so we have gardeners we have aided staff we have self financing staff we have controller of examinations so all those people working there and finance people all those people all those information will be captured under the which database internal staff management database when we say like take finance uh, database right so it might have all the fees related information like what students paid for the college what for which course they have paid and what salary that they need to give college management to give to the people who is working for the college maybe for the professors for the uh, lecturers for the gardeners or whoever maybe all the maintainers for the drivers and all uh, attenders and who all all those people right so these are all we call it as an app object fields and records i'll just uh, give a short demo on that so you get to know what is an app what is an object so we have at salesforce we have everything ba basic informations are available say as i mentioned here in the object right? sales uh, app is a collection of objects so which means like data is a collection of tables so app is a collection of objects so objects will have fields and then records okay maybe i'll just quickly share the screen of salesforce Okay, I hope like you are able to see this for screen, right? So, a table or structure. Okay, so here we have the app launcher. This is called as app launcher. I just created a sample app for the education that I mentioned, right? So for education, I mentioned like uh, we'll be having education activities. Uh, for students, staffs, courses, and departments. This we call it as in the database. We'll have. all this information here we have this as database like apps are called databases so all the information related to education we have library information all other information all those app informations are here i'm just going to navigate through to education information and we have list of students in the college we have staffs we have and we have the departments what department the student actually is in maybe i'll uh, help you this is actually very short demo that i'm going to show you actually salesforce is a very big thing but i help you understand like this is the sales course actually okay so i'm just giving a this is like a database where we are entering the names of the students i pick a student at the top i select arun prabhu i'll have it like arun prabhu so he is from bishop college and what am i it may be so when we say we do not have a registration field number so we everyone should have ic like uh, for arun prabhu i see the registration number as some number random numbers like 19114005 okay so we need a registration so this is how the basic information with salesforce looks like if i need to customize this page so it doesn't require me to take uh, maybe write a code multiple lines of code to inject a new field here so this we call it as an object this we call it as a field and here we have a setup window maybe like one day i'll uh, maybe like once we are back with the uh, after we complete all this pandemic maybe i'll uh, give a workshop kind of thing like how you can work with salesforce so you get to know how to customize things okay so now i'm going to add a registration number here so we do not have 
registration number in this so i'm just going to add a registration number field here so what we had is like students i'm adding a new field maybe the registration number i looked like it's a, all a number so these are all the attributes that we have at salesforce these are all the fields that uh, when we create a new field what kind of relationship that need to be happened within the object and what type of field that is and all those information can be captured here so i go with the text field because like sometimes we have characters like cs or something okay i have the registration number the length can be i see like 15 characters i go with the 20 here and it should be recorded right so everyone in college every student will have for sure a registration number and that needs to be unique as well right so no two students will be having multiple registration number they have to be iteratable okay so i mean like that gets unique for each and every student so i'm just having as a unique i'm just adding it so within a second so we created a field and that field is available in the platform actually believe me this is the shot that i do not have any configuration made just for you i have the registr registration number so i made it as a record so i do not want to have it like add a validation thing like whenever i am just not entering and then saving it should in say like uh, i have missed this so i haven't written any lines of code here you can understand right so whenever i have like 100 99205 i'm just giving it a giving a random number and i go with the same arun prabhu in college name bishop and for the birth date you see so i'll be able to select a future date and i'll be able to save as well but this should it be happen right so in the real world so no one should be who is uh, going to come to world will not be a, a student of bishop ibar college so it should be always in the past so to add a, this we call it as a validation tool in salesforce within a minute we can add validation tool just for your sir, sake i have added yeah sorry so can i ask something so like uh, what are the requirements uh, for this intern like say in uh, to work on our uh, salesforce like a uh, HTML, CSS, the programming language, and the SQL database like that, sir. So we all know the basics, but we don't know how to connect them. Uh, for example, I am um, developing some web page called uh, for some Instagram app, uh, Instagram store called Pickle World. Uh, I know how to design it, like um, uh, using HTML, CSS on. code pen like that stuff uh, now i am doing it in repelit.com uh, but i don't know how to um, host that website in real world and how to use data database and how to connect them uh, those stuffs but i know the sql stuffs uh, that like that so, so what we need to do to connect all in salesforce okay so so that's a good question him yeah so you have been wondering like say i know these kind of course but i do not know how to integrate with it so that's a, that's a good question actually so what we have at salesforce is that you have all those information as i already mentioned in slide one right so all those underlying architecture like your database connectivity so you know that you have the knowledge in sql you are worried about how do i host the application in world real world right so you have created in using code pen or ripple it so what are maybe so you have the code there but you do not know how to host it maybe that is the web application that which is like a, the core architecture like you have created that so after that so this is how the salesforce works so you do not worry about this database connectivity and all those information everything salesforce does for you you what you do is that you customize the application maybe uh, to answer your question so this is since it is outside of salesforce we have web hosting platforms where you host your application in web hosting where we you have the web hosts available or you can use uh, other web, web servers like namecheap or uh, for free hosting you have award space or other way other areas maybe i'll cover that in the last slide i give you a few, few hours for explaining how to host the areas but just to give your uh, 
maybe like just to give an uh, update for you right so you will be able to host that in one of the paid platform or the free platform and then your website runs okay with salesforce you did not worry about writing all those architectures like to create a field i just created a field without writing any code here right so this is called the customization i i'll come to again like what customization is so what as a developer like what uh, after knowing like what java or php what i can do with this salesforce okay so now i say like so you have the registration number is there so what i mentioned is like birth date so birth date should not be in a future date okay so to write this so what we usually do with php or java or whatever language we do is like we go and write a validation rule or a formula or whatever it may be like so we we write some formulas or to validate like maybe if you are working with angular js or you are uh, you write all those ng error and all, all those information right so you have to add those information but at salesforce the rules are already defined which means that you have to mention like what kind of rule we needed or just for the sake of like flexibility i just created this rule uh, before this webinar so this is a new validation rule that we need to give which means that future birthday should not be available and birth date is the field we have so this is the field we have birth date so it cannot be greater than today so which means that it should be in past okay and what kind of error message that it should return birth date should not be in future and where that error should come whether that should come to the next to the field or in the top of the page here so those information will be captured here i save here i disabled for your demonstration i will just save it with active so now when i select a future date when i try to save right so it will ask me birthday should not be in future so how many hours that did it take for us to create this it should be very less than a minute i think like right? so this is how salesforce is so all the base information like errors and then validations all those information will be taking just a few minutes to configure and your application will be up and running and yeah it just save so this is how the salesforce is going to work and I'll just quickly move to the next thing and do not get uh, stuck here so we have two more items uh, so as a, this is all customization that we did in case we saw like birth date is can be in uh, future or in uh, it cannot be in less than that but if there are some uh, situation like where when i when i am a student i should be at least like 18 years of age maybe like more than 18 year or 19 years of age so all this information we write using a code which we call it as apex programming language which is something similar to uh, java uh, java uh, programming language okay so that will take some time to demonstrate for you so that's the reason i'm uh, i'm just covering only the customization so now you get to know what salesforce actually is within this uh, maybe like half an hour time right so now the question would be like how do i learn salesforce so whatever we uh, saw it's a basic thing so for salesforce as i mentioned you have big data you have analytics you have uh, uh, working with the what to say the react js or the javascript all the development stuffs we have everything so this salesforce is taking like years of years to develop an application i mean like it will be replacing the years of years to take an application to build right so it will be replacing that to complete within few months or few weeks even only then you can uh, you can learn this uh, salesforce within few minutes and then you can out keep your up and running maybe like for the hemopria you said like so what kind of application you built actually hemopria you asked a question right so you create an application using uh, repolate or code pen yes, sir so what yes, kind sir. of application you did it is like uh, uh now i only do the content like cms uh, i have my header and 
the details of that shop and contact like that stuff sir uh, uh, now i also developed that uh, website for uh, responsiveness like uh, in tab in mobile phone in uh, desktop like that sir so now i don't know how to interact with users like um, to order something like that sir so i don't know okay. that okay maybe what i understand like you created an application for a shop right Yes, so that's sir. how you created it's my uh, relative shop like okay so you created an application you, uh, that's you how to host it and everything right so with the salesforce so what i showed right so within you created a, you can create an application like whatever fields that you need for your shop you can create as i mentioned so we create a registration number we saved it right so just like that you can create that and then your application will be up and running to design that to add some flavors to have some different a view that what you mentioned that's how the custom development comes into picture with the salesforce so coming to that so how do i learn salesforce so what kind of information is available across the world so that i can learn here okay here is a short video i'll share it with sound Trailhead is the fun way to learn the skills needed to land a top job. Whether you are new to tech or want to expand your skill set, Trailhead is the free, gamified, and interactive way to transform your career. Trailhead empowers everyone to learn in-demand skills. Brand new to Trailhead? From beginner to advanced, there are trails for everyone across an array of in-demand skills. Trail guides are personalized learning journeys just for you that you can take on your mobile or desktop device. Get hands-on with projects in the free Trailhead playground where you can put your knowledge to the test. Along the way, you'll earn resume-worthy credentials from skill-based badges representing tech, business, Salesforce, and soft skills to role-based credentials, including super badges, capstone projects designed to put your skills to the test with a real-world, complex business scenario. Plus, earn role-based certifications that are globally recognized. Get a competitive edge that leads to new opportunities. And connect with a global community of trailblazers from mentorship to employment. As you earn points, badges, and credentials, you are building out your Trailhead profile, your reinvented resume that showcases your expertise. Share it with the community and current and future employers. Start blazing your trail today at trailhead.com. Okay, so you hope uh, you saw that, right? So, so you should have heard about Trailhead. So, Trailhead is the platform where you will be able to learn Salesforce, as I mentioned. Like Salesforce, a very big platform that needs at least like a year or two to learn it completely. Okay, so just like the PHP or the Java platform, Salesforce is a different platform written upon the Java programming language. So, this Trailhead is completely uh, free. free so nothing is chargeable here so to learn salesforce it's completely free so you can log into trialhead.com maybe i'll share the slides after this maybe you can uh, click on the links and see how do i learn because like after i go so you, you you'll be perplexed like how to learn the salesforce so you have like you said like so blockchain is available you said like data science is available you said like forecasting is available you said like everything is available so how do i learn salesforce so through this trialhead you have like tons of modules projects or real time experience you will be able to learn uh, through interactive module okay you you will be able to do some task and trailhead will be uh, validating your task and giving you scores and more than that so whatever you get the scores right you get a batch for each and every application every uh, module that you complete so the batches is more helpful when you add it to your resume so when you are uh, uh, going for the interview so whenever you say like i am a salesforce player, i i know salesforce so they wanted to know like how did you learn salesforce so this trial head will be giving you resume worthy credentials like which means that worthy all those uh, batches so as you earn batches 
they will be giving you certifications and all those information so this is the uh, sample page like you will be able to build something like linkedin profile for professionals right so we use linkedin something like that so this is a public site trailblazer.me so you'll be able to create this page and all those information what you completed learning with salesforce you have super batches which means that you'll be able to complete projects with salesforce they'll be giving some uh, worthy uh, uh, batches which means that how do i learn blockchain how do i learn data science with salesforce or what kind of activities i can uh, do with salesforce so all from basics to become an expert expert right so you'll be able to create a resume worthy credential and this is globally recognized so it is not like so if i go to a company and say like hey i have worked i i have learned salesforce and uh, i do not know what to do it's not like that so company knows each and every company knows that this salesforce has its own learning curve and this salesforce will be providing the specialized batches and whatever you win the batch so that will be added to your account okay so this is actually a program by salesforce it's not from msd solutions or where, the company where i'm working with so salesforce is cloud platform as i mentioned you'll be able to learn it and you will be able to create your own page and again you have the other opportunity which is like journey to salesforce Ma'am, you mentioned like you. What's the capstone project? Can you give an uh, introduction? Like what that is? Video. Video. Um, I can hear you. Man. Yeah. I can hear you. You mentioned like what's the capstone project is. Yeah. Uh, Kindly give us an introduction about capstone project. Capstone project. Uh, uh, I'm not. I think I'm not aware of that. So is it something like what kind of thing? Man? Yeah, I'm asking you. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay. I wanted to know about it. It's okay. Actually, yeah, sure. we are developing a student project. So for the college, student profile. It says including all the details of students, um, and then uh, getting the details from various uh, uh, departments in college, like uh, control of examination or. Personal details. For example, the student can complete their online course or etc. So we want to put all the data in, and we want to create a connectivity between the student activities and the college. Like that student activity or student details will be connected to the class teacher and to the academic dean and in uh, internal quality assurance. So this is what the project as a department we have been taken. So I think. Uh, Uh, we can give some some uh, ideas so that we can take it up for this sales force yeah okay ma'am so you mean it so you wanted to build a solution for the uh, idea that we mentioned right? so you wanted to get the information from the controller of examination and other departments you wanted to have those information here within the sales force right yes. okay so shall i complete this uh, and then uh, get back to it okay so i have like only a few slides where people can learn this uh, salesforce so that they will be able to create an application maybe like they can able to create a, a project maybe they will be able to cope up with the project as well maybe like uh, they will be able to create the projects with this they will be able to attend the vivas and all those information right so with salesforce they need some learning so that's how maybe like once i complete this they'll be able to i'll be able to explain this capstone project as well okay so this journey to salesforce program it's for only for indian people so indian students especially created for indians so where you can log into trialhead which i already mentioned like you will be able to register for that will be able to they will be giving all the modules more than that after completing these modules so you do not know where get, where should i get employed with right so this journey to salesforce program by salesforce will be helpful for you to learn and then get connected with the employees around the world you have 
PWC, all the Deloitte's, and then uh, CTS, TCS, everyone are using the Salesforce. They are connected to this uh, journey to Salesforce program. And uh, this is completely free. And this is an online course. It is not required that you have to uh, disconnect from your regular courses and learn. So we do not actually have a Tirichi. So we, actually, I'm a mentor from uh, for this journey to sales of program as well. So most of the company, most of the students or the college or the universities in Chennai or in uh, Andhra Pradesh or in the North India, right? So they are connected to through this and the students will be learning apart from the academic syllabus and they'll be learning the sales force. Why? Because like we have like millions of jobs available in by 2024, right? So in particularly for sales force, so we have job opportunity that is open, like almost like uh, 20 lakhs jobs available just for India. And while you're learning Salesforce, you will not be alone. You will not be alone sitting within with the computers. So you'll be having a mentorship program. All the mentors will be guiding you and then win. You'll be able to win certifications as well. So certification cost for Salesforce is like we have $200. We have like 30 plus certifications available. So once you get certified, that gets adds a credit along with all the trial head models that I mentioned. So once you complete the certifications, that adds a credibility. Once you get into the job, once you get into the interview panel, so once you say like, hey, I have completed these modules, I have completed these super batches, I have completed these uh, certifications with Salesforce, that increases your credibility within that organization. Okay. So that's a, another short video. And after that, we have a Q&A session. So there, I think like we'll be able to discuss about all your questions. Okay. So this is particularly for the students in India. I would say like whoever is interested, you can reach out to me. I'll help you to get inside this program. And I, uh, this is a, just a, a two minutes video and you might want to enjoy that. In today's world, in the fourth industrial revolution, our industry is growing. The Salesforce economy is set to create roughly 1.9 million jobs in India by 2024. The Journey to Salesforce program gives you the tools to learn how to be a developer, the opportunity to earn credentials, to join a thriving community, and to connect with potential employers. It's online, it's free, and there are no deadlines. Trailhead is extremely informative and fun way of learning. It gives you more confidence to showcase your skills. They help you to understand what is Salesforce, how does how do things work inside Salesforce. It helps you to brush up on your coding skills. The program is made up of a series of modules that are free to access on our self-learning platform Trailhead. Each module has a different focus. We have curated the perfect blend of modules for you covering the fundamentals through to customization, automation, and of course, learning to code with Apex programming language and Lightning Web components. Along the way, there is a huge amount of support out there for you, along with badges and the chance to win goodies and other rewards. And not only that, but once the modules have been completed, you will be connected with potential employers. Anyone can start anytime quickly learn technology and start delivering value to the customers. When I see someone's CV where it says the candidate is completed the J2S program, it means the candidate is really serious about their career. And you're not alone on your journey. There is a whole community there for you every step of the way. And that is in addition to all the webinars, video resources and hands-on workshops. The community is made up of people who work in the Salesforce ecosystem and love seeing trailblazers excel in their journey. They will support you in your career path and share their extensive experience. Think of them as your own personal cheerleaders. The guidance and support is the key here. You will always be supported by the mentors. Every city in India, they do have amazing mentors. There are so many interesting people, so many kind-hearted people in our community who are always ready to help you out. Get onto Trailhead, blaze your trails. Once you land up a job, there's just no looking back. I would really recommend you to not think twice and just uh, enroll in the program. You're not just learning a technology, you're actually joining his family. Just believe in yourself and start trailblazing. Welcome to the journey to your journey. Start your career as a Salesforce developer.
So we saw about like journey to Salesforce program. So that's the program which actually launched by Salesforce for students in India to get fast learning, fast paced learning with Salesforce. Okay. So what are the job opportunities? What are the career opportunities? What if I learn Salesforce? What I what can I do in this world? So you might have this question because like Salesforce is a jargon for this in, uh, maybe for our students and uh, uh, maybe like in Tamil Nadu. Okay, but Salesforce is not new actually. So when I joined my company six years back, like seven years back, so I had the same thought, what Salesforce actually for is. It, the word is something different. But once I got into the Salesforce, I got to know there are too many opportunities in Salesforce where the Salesforce jobs are not for only technical people. So you may wonder like, uh, I student but i do not i have met too many people in my journey right so they they are competition student but they hate coding just because the compulsion of the parents just because their compulsion of their uh, backgrounds or someone someone compulsion they'll be coming into this computer science uh, major but what they I don't want to code but i like to work in computers so if you think in that way so salesforce has a job for you people at the salesforce as an administrator so some people will think like, I'm a developer, I wanted to code a lot. So whatever we saw earlier, right? So it's a kind of admin works. So what we do is like we drag and drop things. We just create everything within just a small comments. So when I want to write a code, Salesforce has a job for even the Salesforce developers. So there are, if I say like, I'm a designer, I wanted to design something with Salesforce and you have Salesforce job for designers. There are Salesforce carriers and designers as well. So in short, like what I would say is like Salesforce, if you learn Salesforce, it doesn't mean that I need to be a technical person, even for a non-technical person or for a designer or for everyone. So we have opportunity for career opportunities at Salesforce because the Salesforce opportunity, right? So we have 4.2 million jobs available, which means like close to half a crore jobs across the world. Next to US, so India is the biggest market for Salesforce. That's where students, like hundreds of students, so participate in the Salesforce program and hundreds of students get placed with Salesforce. And when you compare your salary with other platforms after learning PHP, Java, or other programming languages, right? So it doesn't mean that those programming languages are simple, but I mean, like it's uh, not worthy for that. Those are all the base things that you needed to learn Salesforce. After you learn these, programming language like Java or other information, this Salesforce will be an asset for you. And uh, maybe like in future days, like you come to know, like once you sign up for these programs, you'll be able to know like what Salesforce community is. And now maybe like after this, maybe like I'm in final uh, slides. So after this, you might think like you came and said like what Salesforce is and what we can do, but how do I come to know how to connect with the community? So there we have an online community. Uh, uh, if you should have heard the video completely, you should, have, you should have heard the words like online community or in-person community. So this online community is, again, it's a sale, a trial blessed at salesforce.com. You can ask your questions, whatever. They have like multiple professionals, worldwide professionals, and this is completely, again, free to get connected with them. And now even you have webinars, you have regular seminars, we have regular workshops that's being conducted even in Tirichi, so we have four groups. So some of them are from my own company as well. They have groups, at least monthly, we have like two to three meetings, like through webinars. So they'll be starting with what Salesforce is and how Salesforce, what we can learn and what are the new releases that Salesforce is giving out and what are the new features that Salesforce has and all those hands-on stuffs. And then preparing for the job, okay? So this one, so this is, Something like Salesforce helps the students to understand how my job look like, how to prepare a resume, how to talk, how to talk to my interviewers, what are the soft skills that I need, how and all those webinars and how to work with an interviewer, right? So all this information you have sfdc.co slash TB connect, which is like trial blazer connect. So what, whoever working with Salesforce, they call it as a trial blazer. So you get tons of information from Salesforce to get inside Salesforce and most thing is that everything is free except the certifications. So you can learn Salesforce for a free of cost, but certification is a little heavy cost, but that will be, you will get some vouchers once you complete some batches, as I mentioned, once you complete some modules in trial head, 
you get some you earn some vouchers as you complete vouchers you win swags you win all the good days you give you get some vouchers free vouchers from salesforce you will be able to add that into resume color you can color your resume and that's resume will be able to helpful to get into your break your uh, barriers to get inside your job okay so that's it for today i think like uh, we have too many questions i have, i heard like capstone project that's a one question and other question is on hemapriya and i wanted to see like what other question we have and i'll, I'll answer one by one any other questions maybe whatever we discussed and whatever we uh, whatever outside of salesforce also you can ask the questions i think you are new so we are not able, i'm not able to hear yes ma'am definitely so to answer your questions right so salesforce as i mentioned like once they learn they'll be able to create an application so the application which you are already building right so for your college to connect with the departments i'll just share the screen of salesforce so i think you are able to see the screen of salesforce now right okay so here so this is the app which i mentioned you'll be able to create a new app for the college say like you have you need a department we have to sit with you to understand the requirements like what we look what looks like so we have the students here we have the departments here you can collect those information it's all about integrating those information and then customizing the fields here what are the other information you need and then adding the validations like formula like uh, how many students i have in department so it it doesn't necessarily create a field for that everything will be automatically captured like when i have like pivot tables when we have like in sql we call it like pivot tables all those relationships right so composite keys and primary keys all this information will be handled here with within salesforce you can create maybe like your requirement i would say it should take at least a week or two that's it so you can create that you can create an application that and that can be built by the student and that can even uh, showcased in their uh, project viva and there are hundreds of projects that can be created so recently what we created is one of the healthcare industries uh, so we created for uh, we had like uh, vaccination right so vaccination program and all those contact tracing so for that salesforce built the solution within 2 to two, two months so everyone have who have vaccinated all those information will be captured and all those contact tracing based on that say someone is affected with covid so within a minute like it can understand like within the network like who are all affected with the uh, covid uh, people who are interacted with the covid people and gives all the information about those things so that is available in salesforce you can see in the work.com which is uh, especially for these contact tracing and all those informations uh, i think like your capstone project i think like that can be done for sure with salesforce and we have those part of partial information within this other information like uh, college information other info, other uh, fields you need to incorporate here that's it and again it's uh, uh, you need not worry about hosting this you need not worry about uh, any of those information but the licensing cost it varies from it differs for non profit organization the licensing cost is some cost and for colleges we have some cost and for finance inst institutions we have bit higher cost but for students to create this it's for free so we can so this is a, one of the free org that i have we can create unlimited uh, data and we can hold all uh, unlimited fields we can create unlimited uh, objects whatever it might be so they can play around this uh, or we can they can create, create their own or in unlimited arcs they can create they need to be active at least for one year within this arc so that otherwise that gets expired so to make sure that salesforce is active and that uh, this we call it as an arc here organization within salesforce and these apps needs to be at least clicked only once per year to be active thank you thank you thank you for the response students it's your time you can interact you can ask you can clarify you can take up your career 
your doubts. So many of you have developed apps, mobile applications. So you can also clarify and you can ask your doubts. It's time for you to interact. Also to answer the question for Hemapriya, right? So Hemapriya, you have two options here. One is to use Salesforce. You can build your application using Salesforce as I mentioned. Other thing is that outside of Salesforce, you have created an application. You need a platform to host. So hosting, you can use any of the free hosting websites. Like I recommend like award space. I'm not a brand ambassador for award space. I'm saying like I utilized it when I was in college because it is free. Uh, not, uh, you can rely on their uh, platform. It's maybe I'll type it here, or you have uh, uh, paid accounts as well, like Namecheap and other information awards. Award space. This is paid one. Uh, I mean, uh, Namecheap is a paid one. Here you can purchase an account. It should take at least like 3.5k uh, per year. Award space. It's free actually. So there you can host your all your data that you have created and all those information you can connect there and, and that should be available. And that's not something related to Salesforce. I'm telling outside of Salesforce. I chatted in the chat. I think like you'll be able to capture that. Maybe any other questions outside of Salesforce or outside of any other questions you have in your career or what? Want you wanted to do after learning this language? Any other questions? One more question, Rajesh. Yeah, yes, ma'am. My understanding is, is it an app? Salesforce altogether, it's an application. Yes, ma'am. It's a framework kind of thing. Oh, uh, so does the application also have data, or we have to data input data? So. Does it have a collection of uh, data by itself or we have to have our uh, overall data? So this application is like something like, say, if we are developing, this is like an application that we are developing from scratch, man. So it will have some sample data, but you can delete it and you can have your own data here. And what I would say is like, so in simple terms, with PHP or Java, we create a website, right? So maybe like we can take our college website. So we it has been created using PHP, if I if I say correctly. So it is written in PHP language. So whatever we did is just we created a PHP language using PHP programming language. We created a uh, website, and then we connected it to database to fetch in all the information from there. Maybe like for uh, registration or for I think like for application form and to uh, produce the result, we use database to connect with the php platform and then those information will be listed the same platform we have with salesforce as well so instead of creating a website salesforce created an architecture here for you so it's all about customization say so where the scroller should come where the notice should come and where uh, the result should in which page the result should come all those information will be available in a separate area you can just drag and drop in the into your workspace and that will be up and running within a minute and all the connection, right? So the database which I mentioned, right? Uh, the student database or the staff database which I mentioned, these are all the backend information. You can fetch those information from those database and then display it there. It's something so, similar. Yeah. So it is like a front end uh, development. Like uh, we are only, we are not using the backend like database uh, by manually. Uh, we are only drag and drop our data and we didn't use uh, like using HTML forms like that to access our database by the user. So in Salesforce, we use only the front end, uh, develop using only front end level development. Is it true? So in the database you say, right? So database is uh, what you see, what I saw, what you what I showed you, right? So that's a database actually. That's a window. It appears like it's completely built product. So what it appears like it's already built and you see like it's a front end. Actually, it's a back end for Salesforce. The front end is something like if you see a Vodafone website or an Airtel website or any other websites, right? So that is the front end. So you you cannot notice that there is something behind the uh, uh, behind that website. So behind that website, Salesforce is actually acting in, in their platform. Yeah, just like uh, some existing database that we can use, uh, get and use. 
uh, instantly. Is it, sir? Yes. So you have like three different database. So say uh, for college, student is needed and then um, uh, staffs are needed. If I say for a car manufacturing company, which I said earlier, right? So for them, car models are needed and then they needed accessory companies, sister companies, parent companies, all those companies are needed. These information will be held together in a common term. Say they call it as a contact in Salesforce. It will be like contact in Salesforce will be available, in, uh, available ready for you. You have to customize that contact. Like you have to rename that contact as a student for when you're building an application for college. Or if you're building an application for car manufacturing industries, you have to uh, rename to different term. Or if you are renaming, if you are replacing the uh, uh, application for hospital, you rename it to as a patient. That's it. And you can yes, customize sir. it. You can create a new yeah. table as well. Just like you create new tables in database, you can create new objects in Salesforce. Yeah, uh, when I'm trying to create a database for my uh, for other site, like uh, what I did is uh, using my SQL. Uh, I installed my SQL and then. Um, Using some HTML form, I create, I uh, link that database and doing something, but uh, that is not. I'm not satisfied in that, so that's why I'm asking why, how I can, how I can uh, link database and how I can access because, um, like, uh, when user uh, want to know what orders are uh, placed for his or her shop, uh, so how he or she get that data because I. I having the data in like tables. So how they can uh, retrieve from that table. Okay. So I need a, a bit clarity. So you want the solution, uh, you want the answer in Salesforce perspective or the answer to be in your uh, database perspective? No, sir, like a common uh, view of how database works uh, and interact with user uh, with our Database and the user, how they connect between. Okay. Because customer think, mm -hmm. uses a, a app to some order, some purchase. They uh, like uh, we want, uh, they want uh, this and that. Um, that is stored in database and how the um, shop owner can get it. Okay. So database is purely the data collection of data, right? So you have collection of records. So you have the information stored in your database. So your question is, help me understand, like your question is like, you wanted the shopkeeper to know what is inside the database, right? Is my understanding correct, Hemopia? I think you are mute. Yeah, okay. So as your question said, right? So you have the information in the database. You have to build an application like PHP or Java, whatever you are building, right? You have to create a connection within this database and the application. Actually, you have to understand like database is separate cloud and then your uh, application is separate. You have to link together using Sir. some of the connectivities. And, yeah, help me Sir. answer that. Sir, uh, I just want to know uh, how to connect the backend and the frontend processor. If I do backend in Salesforce and I do frontend in uh, React.js or HTML or CSS, etc., how do I connect the backend and the frontend, sir? Okay, that's a good question. So I'll get back to you once I answer your uh, Hemapriya's one. Okay. So for Hemapriya, so we have like two uh, separate platforms. You have to connect using the database connectivities. I think like if you are using Java, I think like those are all available in your textbooks in the academics as well. You can use those connection strings using that and you can connect with your data with the database. To answer that, I think like I missed your name, Ishwar, I believe. So to your answer to your question, so I have the information within Salesforce. You have built an application using React.js and you wanted to know how do you connect the information from you? How do you fetch the information from Salesforce and you put it inside React.js, okay? So for that, so you have API calls, which means that I think like you should be able to know like what API is application process interface. So those things, right? So you will have a unique URL. So it would be like either in JSON or in XML format, you have to pass the URL and you have to get back. This is one way. The other way is, as I mentioned, Salesforce has multiple clouds within Salesforce. 
so one is like what you see is the education cloud the other cloud is like community cloud that's how the uh, uh, entire websites will be built like vodafone or the other websites right so lg website or other customer care websites so they will be building their site you do not know like it, this is salesforce so they will be building their site within salesforce and that can be written in any language maybe react js or you can write in java or you can write in php and host that information and have that information within salesforce and you can use that using sql so in salesforce we have like sql so not sql it's here like sql which is similar to sql all those uh, dml operations will be similar to sql but there are some added advantages because the way that salesforce is written is in different way so to access the information you will have a different platform here that's it does that answer that question in simple terms it is an api call you have to create an api call and use that i think ishwar in this yes sir i understand okay okay any other questions anything that you wanted to get or is it sounds like sales was something like different that you do not know what sales was is and i am telling you more about sales force and are these words are uh, a jargon for you now how long does it take an average student to learn in sales force yeah that's a great question ma'am so to start with salesforce i would say a non technical person can learn within a week and they can learn still so it had been like 7 years for me i am still learning it's a big platform actually so we can still learn there are too many items salesforce is the uh, as i mentioned it's number one crm because it releases four major releases it, sorry three re major releases they will incorporate too many features maybe like uh, as per the world need right so during this pandemic they needed that vaccination data contact tracing there those information will be added to salesforce and when there is a financial crisis those information will be added to salesforce they will be adding every 3 months or 4 months once so you can learn in maybe like when the blockchain came when iot came they incorporated all those information here inside salesforce and we have to learn that so salesforce is never ending process so they have too many items getting added but to start with salesforce to start and create an application one week is more than enough and it's self paced learning so they can learn self maybe if they have an instructor they'll have they need at least like just a one or two days is more than enough to create an application with salesforce it's such a simple uh, platform and also a robust platform to learn even for 10 years or so they take interns uh yeah hema priya so the interns right so this is salesforce is a platform so it's just like so as you mentioned like php you cannot reach out to salesforce directly and there are some recruitment going with salesforce as well but i'm not sure about student opportunity the best thing that i would say is uh, just navigate back to journey to salesforce slide so you can note the like sports.co/j2s so this is something like you can learn uh, with salesforce and once you learn salesforce no one is going to provide you the job as an intern without knowing salesforce you have to learn at least for this journey to salesforce program as they mentioned it's no deadline you can take a year you can take uh, months to learn but in my opinion it took it takes two months to complete the modules which they suggest you and once you learn you will be automatically connected to their alliance companies so they call it as talent alliance so they have like cts infosys tcs these are the companies that we usually know but there are other companies like deloitte pwc and then these are our big players actually they have like uh, they are actually highly paid jobs they will be connected through this program actually so one of the person mentioned in the video right so he is from one of the big company uh, he actually he is also an employer so once you complete this you will be automatically connected to those people so you need not worry about like whom to reach and how to reach this program is a complete package for you to learn does that answer your question hemapriya
Um, I think you are speaking, but I'm not able to hear you. Uh, it's in mute. So, students, now I think we'll start the session. Uh, many of the students may be interested to take up the intern or any other uh, like workshops. So, may I know how many of you are interested to take up the workshop or internship with um, Salesforce students? You can raise your hands or put yes in the chat box. So, as uh, Mr. Uh, Vijay Shankar said, so it's very easy for you to learn the basics and then you can pick it up. Right? So, Yes, good. Very good. So it's being a very good start for us, all of us, as students and um, academicians, to know about the sales force. So students, you can uh, open up. You can ask your doubts or how we can take up the next step, learning towards the sales force. You can ask the doubts. Um, Mr. Jashankar, we had given a lot of uh, free uh, work arenas, we can learn and to do the projects. Right? It's time for you to interact. Thank you, students. Yes. Yeah, I see like 10 people have raised their hand, right? So you can uh, note this link, like sports.co slash J2S, maybe like I'll also share, share the screen and show you how that looks like. You can, you can type it in the chat. <clears throat> so once you get inside this website, right? So you'll be able to see a register here button and actually it will prompt you. So it will prompt, oh, it's actually logging in. Okay. So actually you'll be seeing a register here button. Once you register, with your valid email address, you will get an update to your email. So the next steps to proceed with that and how you can interact with them, how, uh, what kind of materials you have, you have a trial blessed and mentorship program. The first step I would say is that you can log into the trial, uh, trialhead.salesforce.com. This is the first step I would say. You can just go into it and see how things are with that. You can register here and within that you have learn column. So you have modules, projects. These are all the first thing that you wanted to learn. And the second thing is in the community where you can get you get connected with the community people. You have like tons of people. And I think like once you get here, you can send me a mail and ask me, uh, hey, how do I proceed after this? I have signed up. I have got these materials and how do I proceed? Okay, so when you click on these modules, you have all the modules. So this Salesforce trial head, it is not a technical platform to learn. We have multiple things. So how do I speak publicly? How do I eat? So these are all non -trainers. How do I sleep well? And these informations, right? So that will be helpful for you both personally as well as in your regular uh, activities, right? Also, how do I coach? Even for mentors, like even for our teachers, we have modules here in the sales post. And then we have like a mobile platform. How do I connect with the mobile? All those information. You can learn everything. So it is not particularly only for learning with, say, uh, I mean, like technical information. You have all those non-technical information as well that you can learn here. How to prepare a, a PowerPoint presentation. I think like you should have seen, right? So the PowerPoint presentation that you should have seen is not regular presentation, which you should have seen earlier days. So these information I got personally, I learned from these modules. They'll be having like, say, uh, in this window that you are seeing. So there are some successful uh, software engineer interviews, you have case studies, how to get inside the industries, what are the information that you needed, how to prepare yourself for the in, um, interview, or how to prepare yourself for a project, how to do a project, and everything. So you have, so whatever you complete, right, so you have all hands-on questions. Once you complete that, you gain points for that. So once you complete this, you'll have point systems. Once you gain points, so you'll get added into the batches. Okay, so this is the good start for you. Once you get inside that, once you navigate through that, then journey to Salesforce program will be helpful for you. I see some questions in the chat box. 
yeah i see like it, this is free as i mentioned completely trial head and whatever you learn with salesforce is completely free of cost salesforce doesn't charge for anything except for the certification as i i am reiterating that once you complete some certification you need 200 dollar uh, but you have from free, free vouchers i'll give you some introduction i do not want to uh, load you with dump of your uh, data but i'll uh, guide you once you wanted to uh, uh, take up certifications but you have to learn before you take up your certifications students any other queries students so how many of you are doing projects now started doing projects Yeah, I see. Like Hanupriya raised hands. That's great. So, anyone doing projects in artificial intelligence or machine learning, big data, or data science, which is blooming nowadays? Anyone doing there? Do you have any questions there in uh, in such area? Sir, okay. um, yeah. sir, yeah. um, is we doing any AI projects by using Salesforce? Okay, so what kind of project that you wanted to build? Only then I can answer that question. That's um, a actually big topic that you are asking, so I need to confine that to particular area. Okay, uh, sir, uh, if I want to, if I want to create an uh, AI newsreader by fetching data from Salesforce, likewise, sir. Okay. so ai in salesforce is something different and uh, what you mentioned is something different so you can create a platform as i already mentioned right so it's again answering your first question so how do i uh, fetch the data from salesforce so you have the salesforce you have platform events in salesforce which is create a helpful for you to create a web service call with salesforce you can create an ai website maybe like you can use any of the technologies available for you maybe if you are using python or whatever script that you are using you can fetch the information from salesforce and you can utilize that let's get answer your question ishwar i think like if you have any other questions that you wanted we, uh, i i know like as a student like we will not be asking in public like if you have any questions feel free to reach out to my email address so you can get my email address or even uh, 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 i'm just giving a note that i'm i'm not available in whatsapp so do not uh, uh, search for me in whatsapp so you can reach only through twitter or facebook or linkedin so that in that platform i'll be available in, during my day times so you can reach out to any of this platform you can search my name and you can reach me I, or you can get the email address from uh, your staffs, and you can reach me at any time. When I'm available, I'll attend your calls for sure, and I'll uh, reply back. And feel free. So if Salesforce, you can even uh, ask any other questions out of Salesforce. I'll try to answer if I know something. Like I, if I need to search and I tell, I'll let you know as well. By the time. uh i am also student from the same uh, department right so i know all the difficulties that you are facing all the questions that you might need okay i want to see sir to, yeah sir um i am doing some uh, ai projects sir like mm -hmm. uh, car and pedestrian tracking smile detector face detector likewise sir and i am now learning to create an uh, virtual desktop ai sir if i want to improve my skills in ai what can i do sir improve your skills in ai i think uh, this is a broad question again uh, so we have too many items like ai right so it's a very broad scope so as you confine right so you have to see what are the materials what are the areas like as you confine like 
you mentioned like cartoon wheel right so i lost it for a second sorry for that so which area that you mentioned you wanted to build an application Ishwar, you asked me something, right? So can I iterate the same question again? Or send me an email. So you can send me an email there and I'll respond to you back uh, through that email with the links that I have where you can learn and you can excel. So you have like Udemy courses, you have Coursera courses, you have certain courses, paid courses, non-paid courses as well. So you can learn uh, through that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, Shankar, sir, I'm really happy to uh, listen to your uh, uh, talk. In fact, uh, I was astonished the way you uh, the, the way you have given the talk. It was very brainstorming session today, and uh, I think I open a session also for the students. In fact, uh, they are supposed to do their talk also this year. Probably some of them are interested. They uh, uh, came forward to do a project uh, maybe in. Uh, uh, sales force in the days to come. Probably they will keep in touch with you. Privately, they may ask some questions to you also. And uh, I uh, listened to your uh, talk. Uh, you have touched upon uh, cloud computing and uh, big data analytics. Uh, probably some of the areas which would be useful for our uh, research scholars, young students and the PhD scholars also. Maybe they can uh, make use of the resources from uh, uh, sales force, which would help them to do their research activities in the days to come, right? Probably may help them to uh, do uh, their project to be data analytics, uh, big data analytics, right? Business analytics, uh, whatnot, predictive analytics. Those topics will be useful for our uh, research scholars. Uh, it's, a, it's a high level topic actually, uh, maybe for our uh, students, uh, maybe uh, it, it is a, a beginning uh, a session for them. Uh, probably they may uh, keep it up with you to do their projects also. Well, uh, we will also uh, show much interest in this uh, area. Probably in our college also we can uh, install uh, this uh, platform. Maybe uh, it's a, if it's a cost-effective one, maybe we can uh, install in our uh, college in our institution uh, to do uh, some uh, applications, right? Uh, which will be helpful for our IPAC, maybe for our students' mental health, whatnot. Uh, we will uh, make use of uh, this uh, application uh, for our institution. So yeah, two things, sir. Yes. Sure. Yeah, two things. So first one is on the big data and the analytics side. So I am aware of those things available in Salesforce, but I'm not expert in that. But we have all those learning modules in the trial head. Maybe I'll share those links. Maybe like uh, research scholars can go through what is available in Salesforce in those areas. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that there is no installation required for Salesforce. It's all browser based. You can just click on that browser link and you can within a minute, like your application will be up and running. So they give it uh, uh, for free for all those basic informations. And there's no uh, installation record or no software or record. So it's all within the browser. That's the reason that Salesforce is able to run the business from mobile or desktop or laptop or whatever it may be. So wherever we are in, even with the less connectivity, they have an application only for that less connectivity or lack of connectivity when I am outside of uh, coverage area. So in those areas, we need an up, uh, application, like small application in the mobile, only for that particular reason. Apart from that, Salesforce runs complete in browser. So we need not any we need any installation uh, for this. That's wonderful. And I appreciate uh, Kema Priya and Ishwa for raising uh, pertinent questions. You know, this is what we expect from the student side. Uh, just students, we expect more questions from your side. Unless you raise questions, uh, Vijay Shankar cannot give an answer, right? Uh, now the final chance to give it to some of the students who didn't uh, raise questions so far, you can uh, raise questions. Go over to the student side, once again, last chance. And if no questions, we will go to the last part, uh, uh, form a lot of thanks. And before that, uh, we expect uh, some more questions from the student side. Yes, students, you can unmute and you can ask questions or you can even chat. 
many students raise their hands. We could see that also. Regarding your projects. Well, absolute silence. Then we'll over to on the word of thanks. The request from Sir Bhuneshwari to give away the word of thanks. Good afternoon to all present here, honorable chief guests, beloved HOD sir, faculty members of the department, and all department friends. It's my pleasure to deliver the word of thanks. I extend, extend my gratitude to our honorable chief guest, Yen Vijay Shankar, to take up time from this busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you for inspiring and encouraging us with your words on this special day. Thank you, sir. I extend my gratitude to our head of the department, Dr. Jeejia Satyakulam, sir, for organizing this event. Thank you, sir. I must thank the organizing team, Dr. S. Sophia Ma, Dr. Sushi Satyakma, sir, Dr. D. Kirby Ma, for working hard for the past few days to make this webinar a great success. Last but not least, I thank all the students for their active participation. Thank you all for your time. Thank you all. Thank you all. We'll meet again. We have given the feedback form to the WhatsApp groups. Kindly fill up the feedback forms in the respective classes. Thank you, Mr. Vijay Shankar, for all your patience and motivating all the students. So we will be getting uh, linked with you again for interns and for uh, connecting students with you and their companies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kindly share your so email ID in the chat box. Please. Yeah, okay. Share your email ID in the chat box. No yeah, sharing. Yeah. Students, you can make note of Mr. Vijay Shankar's mail, yes, mail ID. So I sent my both mail ID, my personal mail ID and my official mail ID. So you can reach out uh, wherever you wanted to. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, Vijay Shankar. We are uh, happy to have you. Thanks for spending your wonderful time on us. It was a very useful session for everybody. Yeah, thanks. Sir. Our students got benefited, yes. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thanks. Nice to have thanks. You. Thank you for your time. Yes. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Keep it, yes. God bless. God bless.